welcome back to Canopolis. It's another week with Miss Jessie. We are in September now though, September, and this month we are doing the block party, block party, where everyone is invited. You are invited, and they're invited, and they're invited. We're all invited. And the, sorry, monthly app, life app. So what we need to keep in mind this month is friendship using your words and your actions to show others you care. So today I have my friend, this is Ruby. I actually borrowed her from Phoebe and she is going to help me, which was very kind of her, um, talk about a Bible lesson or a Bible story this week. So our story comes from the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. This is one of those tricky ones that I always think is in the New Testament. It sounds like one of the letters, but it's actually in the Old Testament. And one way that you can remember that it's in the Old Testament is that it is probably, a lot of people think, written by King Solomon. Now, what's cool about King Solomon? Something super duper cool. So, there was like a time when God was like, hey, yo, Solomon, you could have anything in the world, anything at all. What would you want? Think about that question and answer it for yourself. What would you say if you could have anything in the world? Like, there's a lot of things that I want. I want another pet hedgehog, a chameleon, a zoo, um, maybe like a hot tub outside because it's starting to get chilly. And I think that would be nice, right? To have like a warm pool, there's a pool too. So there's so many things, right? That we want. But do you know what Solomon asked for? Wisdom. He asked God for wisdom. And he got it. So Solomon is a very, very wise man. So the book of Ecclesiastes, likely written by him, has some really good advice in it. So give me one second. I have my computer today for notes. And I'm going to scroll down to our computer so I tell it to you right. We are in Ecclesiastes. And I believe it's in chapter 4. Let me double check. Chapter 4. Lots of scrolling. How's your week going? Okay, Ecclesiastes, and we are chapter four, um, and we're gonna be like verse 10, okay? So, we have um, our person here, but I'm gonna, our friend Ruby, and I'm gonna have, can you listen to me while I tell the story a little bit? Okay, thanks. So it says, suppose either person falls down, then one can help the other one up. But suppose a person falls down and doesn't have anyone to help them up. Then feel sorry for that person, okay? So if somebody falls down, you can have somebody help you up, okay? And then if somebody falls down and there's nobody to pick them up, you should probably feel sorry for them. So, goes on to say, one person could be overpowered, but two people can stand up for themselves. Now, let's say that we have... Then we're gonna talk about, sorry, a rope made out of three cords isn't easily broken. So that's talking kind of, let's think about a brain. So two is better than one and three is better than two. So I'm just gonna show you, for example, with my friend Ruby here. Did you hear that story? Okay, so right now I am going to split her hair into two. I'm gonna show you what that looks like, okay? So I don't know if when you, girls, you probably practice braiding. Boys, maybe not so much. Maybe you practiced it with ropes. I don't have any ropes, so I'm doing braids. So with her hair, I'm gonna try and twist it with just the two, because this would be a strand of two, okay? And so, you know, it's pretty thick. It seems good. And let's pretend I had a ponytail holder. That looks okay, right? I'm not gonna try and break her hair. But if we do it with three, Oops, three, and we kind of braid it together. Let's see if this lesson works out for, as Miss Jessie thought, her hair is thicker than I thought. That's part of the problem. So we're gonna do three, and we're gonna braid it. And this would be a great opportunity to practice your braiding. And you just crisscross them over to each other, like that. Boop, boop, boop. And again, we're gonna pretend that we have plenty to hold her. Now, I don't know about you. When I was a little girl, and I was trying to learn how to braid, I thought 
See, that'll stay better than if it was the two. If it was the two, it would go foom, foom, foom. I thought braiding was just twisting two pieces of hair together. And every time I did it, I would put the ponytail in the bottom of my hair, the bottom of my doll's hair, and then it would just kind of like untwist eventually. And they'd still kind of be together, but they'd be pretty loose. And it wouldn't really, it definitely didn't look right. But then, once I learned that it was actually three pieces and I learned how to crisscross it in the way that it's supposed to be, I, the, and I put the ponytail holder in, it stayed a lot better. It stayed all day. In fact, if there's like a time that I want my hair to not be like a crazy mess like it is today, I'll braid it overnight and it'll be in place the next day. But if I tried to twist it with just two pieces, whew, it would be crazy. So the point of all this, like it says, is that a rope made out of three cords isn't easily broken. It's stronger than if it were just two. So you're like, well, wait a minute. You talked about, you're talking about me and my friend. Did you mean me and another friend? And another friend? Kind of. Kind of two friends. So you and your friend and then your best friend. The person who cares about you more than anybody in the world. And I'm not talking about Miss Jessie. I'm talking about God. Any strong relationship, any strong friendship will include God. And yeah, you might have a really good relationship with um, your friend your brother, your sister, maybe one day you'll get married or you'll have a partner who you, you're really good with, you're very strong with. But when it's just the two of you over time or because of stress or something like that, that cord might get a little loose and it might not be as tight. But if you get that third cord in there, that third strand, like in the braid, it's going to stay better, it's going to be tighter, and everything's going to be just a lot neater in your life. So the lesson with all of this is Yes, you absolutely need friends in your life to help you when you fall down, help pick you up, help you out with a number of things, but you also need God. Keep God in every single relationship. Make it a braid, not a twist. Got it? Okay. So, next, you guys are going to watch the so-and-so show. I'll be right back here with Ruby. She'll probably help me with the memory verse and prayers, and I'll see you in like 15-ish minutes. Bye. All right, John, are you ready for the tug of war? Oh, I'm ready, Brandon. On your mark, get set, go! go! How, how is this helping us to learn how to do the tug of war? It's not, it's not, something's wrong. We need to be both pulling on the same rope. Oh, oh yes, of course. <sighs> Let's try this again. Yeah. Star wipe. <laughs> on your mark, get set. Go. <clears throat> oh. oh, man, this isn't how a tug of war works either. No? No. We should be on opposite sides of the rope. Otherwise, it's just going to be. <laughs> Oh, that was unusual. I'm okay. Hello everyone, my name is Brandon. I'm John. And this is The So-and-So Show, a show where me and my best friend try to have some fun, we learn something, Ooh. we do... You okay? Do you need a lozenge? No, I'm fine, please. Continue. All right. Anyway, it's the show where me and my best friend, we try and learn something. What are you doing? Why are you making that noise? You want me to stop talking? No, it's, no, it's, no. no. Just. This is a show where me and my best friend, what is the matter? Why do you keep crying when I say best friend? Are you? It's just that we've been best friends for a long time now, right? So long. Well, the thing is, I've got a new best friend. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, sure. I mean, we can still be friends without being best friends. I mean, we're around each other all the time. It makes sense that we could use a break once in a while. But, but, Believe me, I get it. But I don't... Who is this new best friend anyway? Tell me everything. Okay, so I was walking through the store the other day, mm -hmm. and I hear this voice out of the blue. 
hi. So I turned around and I said, hi, back, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not every day that you meet people who are just plain old friendly, right? So you have to. Anyway, before you know it, we got to talking. And you wouldn't believe how smart she is. I mean, she knows something about everything. We were in the store talking for like hours. The manager said it, I had to leave or make a purchase. And uh, next thing you know, we're walking out of the store together. <laughs> We've been best friends ever since. Well, that's awesome. When do I get to meet her? Oh, oh, she's here. Oh, she is? Yeah. Well, in that case, please welcome someone who knows everything. Is she coming? What? Oh, through the door? Oh, no, of course not. No, no. I don't understand. Besides, she's words. already here. Brandon, allow me to introduce Sylvia. Ah. Say hello, Sylvia. Hello, Sylvia. <laughs> she slays me. That's a great joke. Hey, John, you know your best friend can't be a robot voice in a box, right? Oh, jealous. No. Of course it can. Look at all the fun times we've had together already. Hey, Sylvia, play the friendship montage. Playing friendship montage. John, this thing is not your friend. Jeez. It's a box that you found in It's a box, all right? And, it, and it's just like every other box in the store. That's not true. It is. That is not true. She has answers to all my questions. We have the same taste in music. We, we know okay, where look, I like it, to all eat. All it does is repeat facts from the internet and play generated playlists. No, so she also knows what the weather is going to be like. How does she know that? It's, 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 it's a computer. It's a, it can only give you facts, right? It can't give you, it can't help you like a, a real friend can. You know, like, like a, what's a problem that you're having right now? Anything, tell me. Okay, okay, well, you know my neighbor. Longbeard Carl? Yeah. yeah. Yes, I do. Yeah, well, he keeps blocking my driveway. He's got like six cars for no reason and like, it just keeps frustrating me. Okay, well, um, as your friend who is actually listening to your problems, I suggest that you go to Longbeard Carl and you tell him what's bothering you. <laughs> uh-huh. What do you think, Sylvia? Searching for tow truck companies. Oh, come on. You are not going to call a tow truck and tow Longbeard Carl's car without talking no, to No, I him. know, I know. But I'm just saying Sylvia heard the problem and came up with a possibly good solution. The tow truck is on its way. No, no. Cancel the tow truck. Cancel the tow truck. Tow truck canceled. She was just trying to be helpful. Uh-huh. It's Bible story time with Kelly. Hey guys. Hi, Kellen. Now ordering nine melons. No, oh, no, 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 not melons. Kellen, no, cancel the melon order. Cancel the melon order. Canceling melons. Whoa! You guys found one of the new Sylvia's? You know, sometimes it seems like she found me. He thinks it's his new best friend. Oh, she's way more than a friend. She can do this. Sylvia, go disco mode. Disco mode engaged. Sylvia, stop. No, no, don't listen to him, Sylvia. Uh, uh, go crazy bananas. Ordering 80 bananas. <laughs> What is it with you and produce? No, cancel the banana order. Canceling bananas. You got a story for us, Kellen? I do. And speaking of produce, here's Count Lupe and Mr. Fritter. <laughs> Count Lupe and Mr. Fritter are the best of friends, as you may know, but sometimes they don't make the wisest choices. So, Here's a little wisdom from the book of Ecclesiastes to help them out. Two people are better than one. They can help each other in everything they do. Did you hear that, Count Lupe? Two are better than one. What perfect timing. We can help each other get to the bottom of these stairs. Ha ha ha, who needs help? 
Last one down is improperly aged from Mars. Uh, uh. Oh, ah, yay, ah, uh. how loopy you fell. Oh, crack, uh. oh, crack, yeah. Uh. I'll be happy to help you traverse the dangerous staircase, Mr. Fritter. I have brought a pillow. Oh, thank you, Perry. You are a good friend. Um, yeah. The verses continue. Two people are better than one. They can help each other in everything they do. Suppose either of them falls down. Then the one can help the other one up. But suppose a person falls down and doesn't have anyone to help them up. Then feel sorry for that person. I couldn't have made it safely without you, Perry. And I could not have made it safely without you, Mr. Fritter. I could not make it to the hospital without either of you. Help! Friends are there to help each other. And when we mess up or when we fall down, friends can help us get back up. But Ecclesiastes has even more wisdom for us. <clears throat> One person could be overpowered, but two people can stand up for themselves. And a rope made out of three cords isn't easily broken. It's very crowded in here, Perry. I hope we'll be safe. We will be safe, Mr. Fritter, as long as we stick together. There's strength in numbers. You're right, Perry. You're so right. Hey, where's Count Lupe anyway? <laughs> Hello, you two. <laughs> I hope, uh, hope you are enjoying being packed in like kinds of sardines while I have all the space in the world. <laughs> are you sure it's safe up there alone, Count Lupe? We can make room for you down here if you'd like. <laughs> Never! Besides, I am not all alone. There are two bags of uh, frozen green peas here to, to, to keep me company. Oh, Count Lupe, those peas have been there for years. I wouldn't mess with them if I were you. <laughs> Nonsense! It is they who should not m m m mess with m m m me! Count Lupe! Look out! Oh no! Yeah, that was silly. But the point is, a friend is there for you when you need help. They give you advice, they stand up for you when you're in trouble. It's good to have a friend. Isn't that right, Count Lupe? We. Oui. <laughs> Back to you guys. Thank you, Kellen. That was a good lesson. Mm -hmm. It was very uh, fruitful. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. Yeah. Hey, do you get why this thing can't be your friend now? I mean, it's not going to give you advice. It's not going to stand up for you when you're in trouble. Uh, okay, okay. You're right. But it is good for one thing. Sylvia? Reveal the question. Thank you, Sylvia. The question of the day is, what makes someone a good friend? Someone who listens and cares? Yeah, someone who knows a little more than just how to do an internet search. Hmm. Yeah. Brandon, will you be my best friend again? Of course! Ah! <laughs> Sorry, Sylvia. I'm going to go ahead and shut you down, all right? Yep. What are you doing, John? My mind is going. Daisy. Daisy. Give your answer, do. So talk about it together. Uh, what makes someone a good friend? And we'll see you next time on the So and So Show. Yeah. Ah. Oh. Ah. <laughs> How long are these stairs? That's too much, man. That's amazing. <laughs>
and have her help me because sometimes I feel really lonely being up here all by myself. Oops, her little thumb stuck. Let me help you out there, Ruby. That cannot be comfortable. Oof. Aren't you glad you have a friend like me? I also brushed her hair before I braided it, so I'm doing pretty good. Thank you for your help today. Okay, our memory verse. There's some really cool things about our memory verse this weekend. I hope I remember to tell you them all. It is from the book of Proverbs. Okay, so the first cool thing that I want to tell you is that it's um, Proverbs is right by the book of Psalms. Um, and it's kind of, it's written all like in like two line pieces each. I wish I could tell you like more about what that structure means, but like um, Proverbs, it kind of, a lot of these, uh, it's very quotable. Do you know what that means? Quotable. It's something that you can write down and it's, they're pretty easy to remember because they're written to be remembered that way. Um, in these book of Proverbs and Psalms and things like that, you will see like paintings of, or maybe somebody has like a quote written on a piece of paper and they put it on their wall. Um, so they're really good little chunks of the Bible for us to remember. So that's good for memory verses, right? The other cool thing about the book of Proverbs is, do you remember me talking about Solomon? I hope so, because it's just a few minutes ago. And remember what I said about the book of Ecclesiastes? Probably written by Solomon. Proverbs was written or probably written? Written for sure. Mostly. Most likely. Mostly. <laughs> by Solomon as well. So, just like in Ecclesiastes, there's so much wisdom. Because remember what he asked God for was wisdom. So much wisdom. Just like that in Proverbs. Okay? So, the third really cool thing. Really interesting thing. Um, that if you've been with me before, this might um, make sense. Is... Uh, your memory verse, which I don't have the, the sheet this week, but I will next week because I will have somebody help me to print it, a good friend, print it, it's Jacob. Um, the sheet with the memory verse, it has the verse from the MI, little r, capital V, okay? New International Revised Version. And I have the New International Version. And I always say, it's it's same, there's like little differences, and they, you know, for the most part, they mean the same thing, and they, they do, they mean the same thing. The God meant the same thing, um, it's just different translations help people understand it differently. And that's still true here. But for the most part, when I've told you the verses, there'd be maybe be one or two little differences. But this time there's a pretty big difference, okay? So, I'm going to read it from my Bible. And then I'll read the memory verse. Um, and everybody's going to have the same memory verse, no matter your age. Because I think it's a good one for everybody. I think it's going to be really manageable for everybody. But I'm going to read you the two different versions. And I just want you to hear the difference. And keep in mind that they're saying the same thing. But here you can really see how the different translations might help somebody understand it differently. Okay? So let me get this ready here from this Monthly memory verse, I got that there. I have this here. Okay, and remember we are in Proverbs 17, 17. Okay, in my Bible, do you see it, it's right? Yeah, okay. It says, a friend loves at all times and a brother is born for adversity. Do you hear that? A friend loves at all times and a brother is born for adversity. Now, the memory verse that you guys have in the NIRV. So this is a revised version of the Bible that I have. It says, a friend loves at all times. That's the same, right? They are there to help when trouble comes. Is your mind a little bit blown by that? I, I don't know. It's My mind's not necessarily blown, but it is like a little shook, shaken, a little shook. Um, because... Those sentences sound so different. Again, so the second sentence is mine is, and a brother is born for adversity. But this one says, they are there to help when trouble comes. Those words are very different. But if you think about it, adversity, do you guys know what adversity means? It means like trouble or struggles. Um, usually like in life or I get like a, that a person is having. Um, that's what that means. So it says a brother is born for adversity and a brother I think is um, supposed to be like a term for friend. So let's reword it. And a friend is born, born and 
come into your life and there for troubles. They are there to help when trouble comes. You see how they're saying the same thing, but at first it doesn't really look that way. I just think that's really cool because Miss Jessie is always, I always point out that sometimes it might sound different in my Bible than what it says on here. And it always, it's always just a little different, but this time it's really different. And I just want you to know it's okay. It's okay. And this is why if you're ever having a hard time understanding something in your Bible, it's an awesome idea to go and find a different version of it. Most Bibles have it written on the spine of it right here. It's kind of hard to see with mine. It's silver on this green color, right? But it might be easier to see. Any Bible you have will tell you what kind of Bible it is. It, it's usually capital letters. Here's some examples. I have the NIV. There's the NIRV. There's the ESV, which stands for um, English Standard Version. There's the NLT, the New Living Translation. Um, there's some called, there's one called The Message. There's one called, I think, The Good News Translation. There's the KJV, which is the King James Version. There's the NKJV, the New King James Version. There's a lot of different versions and it's keeping up with our language and our culture and our society. And yeah, it just hits different little boxes of what people may or may not understand. So. Just wanted to throw that in there because I just thought it was so cool when I saw the difference between these. So you guys got it? All right, let's focus on that memory verse now that I had that little, that little, uh, I don't want to call it a rant, but if you want to call it a rant, that's okay. Okay, <clears throat> here we go. Memory verse. This is for everybody because you've got it. I believe in you. A friend loves at all times. They are there to help when trouble comes. Proverbs 17, 17. And it's easy because the verse and the chapter are the same. Friend loves at all times. They are there to help when trouble comes. 1717. So I want you to think about what it means for you to be a friend um, and how you can help others. And I want you to look around at your friends and make sure that they're helping you. I mean, you don't have to like, I don't know, be mean to make be mean to make sure that they're helping you, but because we're called to be friendly and to help each other, it's actually kind of nice of you to ask others for help. It might not seem like it at first, but honestly, you're helping somebody uh, do the work that God intended them to do. I know it sounds backwards. Don't take advantage of it or anything, but for sure, if you need help, you should ask, okay? All right, so we went over Ecclesiastes, we went over Proverbs, we talked about Solomon, we talked about the three chords. Practice your braiding and see what I mean. Go get some rope maybe. Um, if you have a doll, see what I mean with the two versus the three. It's really weird how it happens. Um, and I think, is that all I have? That's all we have. So we're going to do prayer requests. Um, I don't think I got any this week except for, um, I would like you guys all to pray for our church this week and our community and that things are going, we've been having just like everybody in this world right now, things have been really hard and struggling, okay? So we're doing okay. We're doing okay. But we could definitely use prayers that things um, maybe get a little bit brighter. And I just want you to pray for any um, anybody in our church who is feeling a little bit down about the changes going on or sad or um, disappointed. Let's just pray for happiness and joy and that we continue to through these struggles and these adversities, make sure we're asking our friends for help, make sure we're asking our friend God for help, and that we're keeping in mind how this all plays into God's plan and that we're doing it the way that God wants us to do. Okay? All right, here we go. Ready? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for um, another great week and another great month. I am so looking forward to um, this block party theme that we have going on. Um, I can't wait to see what lessons you have to share with me and for me to share with those kiddos. I thank you so much for Solomon Solomon, and the wisdom that you gave him. And I think it's super cool that he asked for wisdom and he got it from you. But not only that, he had the wisdom to ask for wisdom and you created him to do that and it happened. I just think the way that you work is amazing. And um, I pray that myself and my friends see that th those amazing things and the way that you work, and we continue to be amazed by it and search for ways to experience and uh, assist in that amazement. Lord, I pray for our church. I pray that 
um, any troubles that we're having uh, are overcome and that through it we look to you and we ask for um, we ask for our us to be a continue to be a blessing to our community and we do things for you and with you um, I pray for any heavy hearts any um, disappointment any, anything that isn't feeling um, joyous Lord I pray for joy to be felt um, we love you so much, God, and we pray this all in your son's name. Amen. All right, well, that is all I have this week, you guys. I hope you have a really, really good week. I hope your September is already off to a great start. Um, and, yeah, have an awesome time. See, uh, Connect with your friends. Ask for help. Be a help. Three is better than one. It's better. Three is better than two is better than one. All right? Bye! F is for friends who do stuff together. U is for you and me. N is for anywhere, anytime, at all. Down here in the deep blue sea. I'm sorry. Let me pick you up, Ruby. I'm sorry. I'm going to pick you up, my friend.